pleasure to be here, and uh, this is, of course, the last session of the conference of the Master Education Week session. This is the first time I've been able to be here. Both of you are welcome again, and you will want to be here. And so I really appreciate that. Uh, I want to do some housekeeping first before we get started. Uh, some questions quickly here. Um, so, uh, very first thing. This is the presentation page for this presentation. Uh, I love that city where I live at. We have all the archives back there, but I also keep my own archive page of my presentations. So later on, if you're looking for the slides or the audio or the video or the link, that will be there. Um, you'll be able to find it there on my website. Uh, and then once the slides are preloaded, so if you're following that at home, and you will be able to image in it, and the words are that clear on the slide, you can go there and find the most of the slides now in the Expressive Exposure. Next thing, and this is the part that Frank brought, this is very fun. How about Canada? And it's not just the ordinary Twitter of C13 some of the back channel. So, here it is. He says, what fun is a conference and a conference presentation? You can't put the link now up on the screen, but I'm just going to show you. Um, so, I invite you to do this. I can read it here as well. I want to go up and look back to see my own slides. But if you don't find it, it'll be right front and center. You can either tweet using the hashtag, which will pick up those, or you can go to ads.ca slash chat, and you'll get a nice comment window that it shows there, and you can comment without having to log in to Twitter. So for those of you who are Twitter holdouts, you'll find that right into the heart of it. Uh, again, those of you who are not with us in person, Including the user, you also are able to participate in the conversation either of those two ways. And what's pretty cool is if you're sitting there in Addis Ababa and you make a comment, the people hearing that are going to see it. Um, and the way it works is once every 10 seconds, a new comment will come up. <laughs> I'm going to break up from time to time reading really, these, I'm sure. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to get my own problems. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to get a few less than that. Oh, shoot. Yeah. Whatever. <laughs> okay. So, that's the setup. I uh, do like that. It's more fun. Um, I've got a slide. I've got a card. Uh, I don't really feel bound by my presentation, and I'll be the fact that I could suggest. Uh, I only have a, a 35 years old one, I've got two on the slides. Um, you can go there, but uh, yeah, I've got Brian Fukuda, his friend, he's talked about that, and there's an objection, a comment, whatever. Uh, try to keep them clean. Remember, you're broadcasting on Twitter, worldwide network, which has content. Well, you are not here to so be clean. Um, so, without further ado, we talked and uh, I look forward to your comments. Thank you, Scott. 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 I put on my uh, Twitter the links for the people that join my Twitter page there. Uh, be warned, you put a link on my Twitter now. This is a link, and I'm going to get this by bugs. So, as was mentioned in the introduction, I was here, well, actually, I was in Manchester, but I was at Art Steve in 2005, and I made a wonderful time. I was 
Joseph Raiders, Daniel's heir, and my uncle from the Franklin and Freddie Frank, who created the unavoidable disease for the last few years. This is going to go into the library. And the tip trust keep the trust. Tim Trust and Richard, they brought me to my uncle's transference uh, as, as a true thank you note uh, because I had a special time with those people. And so my understanding is that I was investigating these mysterious people in my triangulation, which was I found it interesting and I ran it because I didn't really believe in collaboration properly. So it fell in that triangulation conference. It's interesting many years later to see the reactions from my time and from the people who have been presented to me this week, which is fascinating to me. Uh, one person remembered this thing they said and said, How many of you who presume to have been a great writer of play? The idea is very sad, but we sometimes depict this natural, freely chosen collaboration is not necessarily the case. Was raised and the discussed uh, in the Captain uh, uh, Post Solidarity Center. Uh, and it's on the Collaboration is the joining of together of things that do not naturally want to be done. Is another thing I say in my Chester in 2005, in which she, as she says, there's a part of us that can be great. And I said that because, of course, we're not exactly challenging to the people of the conference. I know if I can get away with saying that now and I can do it all this time and wait, so I'm still. So, I'm going to pick up where I left off in 2005 with a little introduction. And let's look at where collaboration has grown since then and then the concept of collaboration and the Google Trends. And it went from 2005 to now, as you can see, it's kind of steady. But we also have the alternative concept. I know it's not quite a bit of that alternative concept in this time, but it's something that I wasn't really able to drive as much as I wanted to in 2005 because I couldn't even figure it out right. But now, as you see, I'm saying yes, it has. I can say for sure that it's now the same. Pretty much run deeply in collaboration, collaboration, but there are two distinct concepts. And I'm going to talk a bit today about how these concepts are distinct uh, and how and why I favor cooperation as opposed, as opposed to collaboration. But that's kind of sub theme is what we're talking about. So, other things happened in the interim between 2005 and now. When we looked at Google Trends, that was chilling collaboration on the display board. Look at the uh, distribution by region. I think we moved on to something in Canada. Uh, Canada is the nexus, the rural nexus for network time. I find that very interesting. Well, it's really divided in one way to communicate. Somebody typing it in, that's great. That's a, an anonymous random comment from Google. I, I actually don't like to do that. I actually don't like to comment on something. I just think we get a bit much. So that's, that's of course, I graduated to get to it. You know, I had this chat system and I didn't have people commenting it. But I have had to deal with a random and actual comment of 
the time before the time. And so we want to actually some tip by tip that you just chose and kind of pull it or that kind of interest in search engine or something turns into the limit and the item that you can use. So as people are commenting, the kinds of website that have something to do with that link and type spam and that would be true. Anyway, that's where a lot like the cost of some websites. And networks over time, I guess, uh, have gradually become less centralized and more distributed. Now, these networks have different functions. A network that is centralized, for example, will be much less stable than a network that is decentralized. Consider, for example, my friend Dan Lillerman is speaking to posts. Um, if a person out there gets to the goal of all of this, it's just too hot before everybody in the network gets to the goal of all of this. But if you have a distributed network, if one person gets to the goal of theirs, it might be five or six times before everybody gets it. This creates a benefit for them. Delay in many ways makes the network more resilient and more adaptable. So, we have some networks that are less resilient, others that are more. Some that are susceptible to bad cultures, if you will, and others that are not. This is how I classify the dynamics from the only one. Aside. Everything I say in this talk or in any talk ever has been said by somebody else before and better than me. Uh, so, but this is the way I remember it when somebody said it. Yeah. So, here's, here's the video. The collaborative kind of networks, and that's a new part of that one I found in collaboration, resemble more these centralized networks. So, I've put two and three. On the left is the classic starship map. You might think about it on my end as the dictatorship or the past at the same time, right? Because you have the one very influential node in the center, and that node fires every other node in the network gets it. Right? Then you have a slightly less centralized kind of network that Network to the right, it's still kind of a static network, but it's this, what they call a public spark, where you still have a central node, you see it at the center, but the responsibility has been distributed again. And that's your classic collaboration. And as an aside, so many times I see that hierarchy presented as a network, but it isn't. It's a hierarchy. It's not really a network. Well, it is a network, but it, it's not one of the most distributed kind of networks that, that I like to think of. That would be a cooperative kind of network. And you can see in the cooperative network, it's much more catered to uh, the distribution of that uh, links per node is more or less the same. Every node in this whole network has two or three. When you have networks like that, as I said, it tends to be more robust. The power of any individual is not extremely greater than any other and then we have the other kind of networks, which I classify here as competitive. And you, know, you, you, you sort of want to, to draw a, almost a gradient here, I think. Uh, collaborative is everybody's on the same page, right? Cooperative people are kind of doing their own thing, but they're all they're, they're connected to other people in that group. And then competitive. You just do your own thing, you can have hands and you do it whatever, right? Um, interestingly, a 
I like that gives us this fun school of the city as a matter of where everybody is connected to everybody. I think chance is a kind of chance. One is a chance of science, the other is a chance of science. What would math be? In a way, it's a sweet spot. Somewhere in time, nobody's connected and everybody's connected. So there's going to be a sweet spot where each of us has more or less the same number of connections to everybody else and the usual number of connections that we can cope with. You can see why we call it the collaborative networks. People can point to them and say, look, put their brand and say, you know, the stock network, but they can't find that time for everybody else. Okay, you know, the time rack is real. You never want to get things done. But yeah, because they're better than nobody's connected and everybody's connected, right? They're, they're not uh, the biggest part of uselessness and creating time for their living. So they yeah, act as the biggest part of uselessness. And then, the levels of connection and usefulness. So they're kind of hearing in this thing. But what I want to do is at the top, I want to be at the sweet spot of connecting the distributed time of my life. I set the speed of these things to uh, one message every 10 seconds. I am toyed with the idea of tweeting six tweets per minute. I don't know exactly what they do to change the speed of these things. I tweet. So if, if I'm lagging behind on a tweet, someone, you know, on the message, if somebody you know, gives me a shout by the speed of that, they don't pretend to be They don't see it from the tweet. Collaboration is the suspension of hostilities in pursuit of unanimity. So it's just the this side of competition is fun. So, um, I don't know how to reflect this because that gives me a little discomfort in being entertained. I'm not sure I want to be entertained in order to be discomfort. Is that the word? Uh, okay, so. You guys have spent the last three days in the last five days or something where you fall deeper into the Bible times and everything, but come back this time. Uh, it's where a lot of aspects of cultures are learning, and especially some of the things that stood out for me where they get to learn these things about um, the, the open culture things. A lot of stuff that we did so much stuff like this. Um, and it's so much. Yeah. 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 It's a theme that represents this kind of management view where somebody wanting something that you can't do with the back of your hands. So, the theme of the conference is building a new culture to learn. And when I looked at that, the first thing I thought it was, um, aside from probably nice little lighting here, I thought um, that's a category area. And category area is a concept. Describing what uh, philosophy called Gilbert Brown, whose behavior is the point of that invention. Uh, and what it is is the attribution of a property appropriate to one category to entities of another category. And the example he gives is of school spirit. And there are a lot of behaviors here, so maybe we can look at the concept of school spirit. And somebody from another land comes to this university and says to Gilbert Brown, well, I see the gymnasium, I see the arts building, I see the library, and I see the administration building, but I don't see the school spirit anywhere. And Brown says, well, I don't want to try to change that. And it's, it's not the same sort of thing as one of the buildings on campus or one of the uh, instructors or students on campus. School spirit is what we might call an emergent property. It results, or it exists as a result of the sum total of all of the entities and all of the behaviors on the campus. 
we talk about the world of the culture, it was kind of important to say that it's going to go off seven million and not to try to have the same problem because we saw the question of the world of the culture and how it was to go to the world of the culture and how it was to go to the world of the culture. This is so interesting. I wonder if you're talking about it. What kind of stuff? Oh, this is how I do it. I'm trying to do it. Okay. So, nuclear uh, power is really a picture. It's a serious problem. It's a sort of problem of science fiction and whatever. The problem is hard to deal with for anybody who is supposed to be interested in the human being. And there's all kinds of questions that are asked in the question. How will we be able to do this? What will we be able to think about that kind of stuff? And there's all kinds of different things. But I want to talk about this question. And then, because this question is a little bit of a group, even though I think you're right, it's true. This question is a little culture and The very first thing that I hear about the culture concept is the notion that it contains the notion, and I don't know how to write it, the notion of things as changing to the relatively essential object, which is the relatively unchanging. Uh, and it goes into a few different questions. I just kind of like blue and black to show the cost of the entire Pacific Ocean. And that's one way to uh, involve and 